Hi everybody, I'm Francesco Murdaca and a member of the Project OFF team. I'm part of the AI Center of Excellence and Office of the CTO at Red Hat. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make your experiments repeatable and share them safely with your peers and colleagues. In the last video of this series, you discovered how to spawn an image from Jupyter Hub on Open Data Hub that you can use for your project that is running in the Operate First environment. Today, we start from an already spawned image and the first thing we are going to do is to install dependencies for our project. But first of all, let's see what are these dependencies. Dependencies are basically external software packages or libraries that you want to use in your project or simply that your project depends on. A direct dependency might be the popular Pandas package, but Pandas itself depends on other packages, for example, NumPy, which is called transitive dependencies in this case. Let's have a look at some possible approaches to install dependencies. The first approach we consider is to run a command in the notebook cell to install the dependencies directly on the host environment. For example, let's have a look at this notebook. We can see that the first cell contains two commands, pip install pandas and pip install matplotlib. One may think that another user considering the same notebook can run that cell and install the packages that work with that notebook. In reality, this might not be true at all. In fact, if another user tries to rerun the same cell after hours or days, a new version of the direct dependency of, or the transitive dependencies may be released. Therefore, the new user might receive, for example, the same version of the direct dependencies, but not of the transitive ones, or not even the same version of the direct dependencies. Both situations might break the dependent code in the notebook. Let's have a look at another approach. Another common way to install dependencies is to add a requirement.txt file that lists all of the dependencies so that someone else can install them before running the notebook or directly from a notebook cell. If we open this requirement.txt file, we can see that there are two packages, pandas and matplotlib. As you may guess, this approach is similar to the one described before, as we are not selecting any specific version for our dependencies, and therefore we might fall into the same problem. What happens then if we add specific versions for the direct dependencies? For example, we can state pandas in version 1.4 and matplotlib in version 3.4. As we mentioned at the beginning, direct dependencies depend on transitive dependencies. They are as important as the direct ones because they can affect your code. Therefore, they also need to be stated with specific versions. All approaches described so far are what you are probably used to if you are developing on your local machine and on your own. But there are issues with these approaches to specifying dependencies if you work in a team or if you want to share your work with a larger audience that might have different environments. We can conclude that all these approaches do not support reproducibility and therefore they should not be used to share work with others. To guarantee reproducibility, you must account for all the dependencies with specific versions for the direct and transitive dependencies, including all hashes used to verify the provenance of the packages for security reasons. To be even more precise, the Python interpreter version, the operating system and the hardware all influence the code's behavior. Therefore, you should shell all of this information so other users can experience in the same behavior and obtain the same results. In order to help developers and data scientists to guarantee reproducibility and shareability so that they can focus on the actual problem, Project Toth introduced a JupyterLab extension called JupyterLab Requirements to easily manage dependencies. The image spawned from JupyterHub on Operate First already contains this extension Therefore, when you open a notebook, you might have noticed that there is a button called Manage Dependencies directly in the notebook bar. Let's open a new notebook. Let's open an empty notebook. When you click on the Manage Dependency button, a dialog box will appear saying that no dependencies have been found because the notebook has no content and there's no metadata relative to dependencies. If you click the button with the plus sign icon, you will be able to add a new package for your notebook.
For example, let's add some common data scientist packages, pandas and matplotlib. In this case, we do not constrain the versions because we want the dependency resolver to select the optimized version for us. We will talk about different resolving strategies in a future episode. For now, just assume that uh, you will get the best versions for all the dependencies, direct and transitive ones, for your notebook. When we add the packages we need, we can click on the Save button to store our requirements in the notebook metadata, and at the same time, an Install button will appear. Before installing, you can still check the package names and versions, select the kernel name for your environment, or modify inputs for the dependency resolver. After clicking Install button, the extension will start locking the dependencies, which basically means that uh, there will be a new file with all the direct and transitive dependencies that contains all the versions for all the dependencies, including hashes for provenance checks. Then the dependencies will be installed in a new environment from that file. And at the end, the new environment will be assigned to the notebook kernel. As you can see, there is no human intervention and you are ready to work on your project. If we take a look at the notebook metadata, we will find the inputs we requested, the dependencies, both direct and transitive one, locked to a certain version and all with ashes relative to that package, the dependency resolver used to create the file and the runtime environment in which the notebook will run. If you have existing notebooks with code, you can still use JupyterLab requirements extension to share them. Let's go ahead and open a new notebook that's already been started and contains two simple commands. The first one is to import pandas library, and the second one is to initialize a data frame. If I hit run, as you can see, the notebook fails because pandas is not present in my environment. If I use the JupyterLab requirements extension button in this case, I can receive suggestions on the libraries to be installed to run this notebook. The extension does this by looking at the code in my notebook and figuring out what dependencies are probably required. How cool is that? Once the install button is clicked and the process terminates successfully, all information required to run the notebook will be present in the metadata as we described before. Now I can safely share my notebook with my colleagues and they will be able to replicate the same results. That's all I wanted to share for today and I hope you learn how to handle dependencies easily using the Project Auth, JupyterLab extension for management and optimization of dependencies. This extension is available in the images spawned in JupyterHub from Open Data Hub on Operate First environment. In the next video, you will learn how to use Git for data science projects. Thank you very much and see you soon.